Is it safe to use water on your bicycle? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. So my bike cleaning videos on my channel have gotten quite a number of views over the years. And I've had a few people leave comments saying that you should never use water when cleaning a bicycle. In fact, I had a guy on my channel say that someone at a bike shop told him that he should never use water when cleaning his bike. So in this video, I'm not only going to tell you that it's okay to wash your bike with water, but I'll go so far as to say that you should use water in some circumstances to avoid damaging the clear coat on your bike. There are professional mechanics all over the world who wash bikes with water. Have you ever watched a professional cyclocross race where the racers are coming into the pits, handing off their bike that's usually completely covered in mud to the mechanic, hopping on a freshly cleaned bike, and then going back out for another lap. While they're doing their next lap, their professional mechanic is hosing off their bike, getting it completely clean, and he's only got like seven or eight minutes to do that before the guy comes back through. Now, do you think a professional mechanic would hand off a bike to, let's say, Matthew Vanderpool that is compromised in its performance because it's been washed with water? No, I did a bike trip in Keystone, Colorado a few years ago where we stayed right at the village where they were renting downhill bikes. And every night the mechanic was hosing off the rental downhill bikes for the next day. And that was happening day after day for the whole summer. And there are countless other mechanics who use water to clean bikes. Now, let me tell you why I think you should use water when a bike is really muddy. I used to race a lot of cyclocross and there are a few races where my bike was completely covered in mud and by the time I got home, the mud had dried. Now, if you try to take a rag and wipe off mud, especially if it's got rougher sediment, so if it's in more sandy soils, you really do risk damaging the clear coat on your bike, especially like a carbon frame with a clear coat you're wiping those sediments into the frame, not to mention how long that would take to clean an entire bike that's covered in mud, especially when it's dry, the number of paper towels and rags that you would use, and you still wouldn't get it as clean as if you just hosed it off with water that I show in my how to clean and detail a bike video, which I'll drop in the description below. So I'll use my gravel bike as an example here. And I got caught out today in the rain on a Lime Rock Road. Now this isn't like completely covered in mud. Like I've had some of my bikes in a cyclocross race or a muddy mountain bike race, but you know, I've got a healthy coating of sediment on this frame. And if I were to try to take a rag and wipe some of this off, you've got some sand and lime rock in this coating. And again, if I did that over and over again, I would really risk putting micro scratches in the clear coat of my frame. Now, if I just hose this thing off, this stuff is just gonna fall off. It's already dry. This was several hours ago. I had to put the bike away. It was on my lunchtime ride. And so, you know, everything's dried on. Also, I don't see how you would get a drivetrain clean, especially if it's really muddy or gunky. You know, road bike drivetrains to me get really nasty just because of all the oils on the road and things like that. But to get a chain and a cassette clean without water, I just don't think you can do it. I like running my chain through a chain cleaner and getting it clean that way. And you know, that's water and degreaser. And then when I'm done, I just hose it off. Again, I've got all those techniques below in that video, how to clean and detail a bicycle. But I just wanted to show this one as an example. So it's true, you should not force water in the areas where there are bearings, headset bearings, bottom bracket bearings, hub bearings, using like a high pressure sprayer or even the jet mode on your hose nozzle. And you should never use a high pressure sprayer on any part of your bike at like a car wash where you put coins in and you know, you just, you know, they're made for washing cars, not for bikes. So that is a situation that you should not use water, but using a regular hose with a shower, even the jet mode on your hose nozzle on the chain and maybe other parts of the bike. Again, if it's not the bearings, you're fine, but trickling water over bearing areas is really fine. Bikes are made to get wet. Mountain bikes are made to ride through creeks and through the rain. Road bikes are made to ride in the rain. In fact, I remember when I was in college, we were heading to a road race and we had our bikes on top of the car and we got caught in a thunderstorm for like an hour where the rain was absolutely torrential. Now, the amount of water that hit the bikes at 70 miles an hour 
was probably the equivalent of like, you know, 100 washes, the bikes were totally fine. So again, I just wanted to make this short video to dispel any kind of false rumors that you shouldn't use water on a bike. To sum it up, you're better off using water if your bike is covered in dirt and mud and dust so you don't risk rubbing those sediments into your frame. Also, you're gonna save a massive amount of time using water versus trying to take a rag and wipe every little part of your bike. Can you imagine like wiping every single spoke and every single part of your bike with a rag without using water? It would take forever and I don't think it would be as clean as if you use water. And finally, like I said at the beginning of the video, there are professional mechanics all over the world who clean professional bikes with water. So I don't know if this video is gonna stir up any kind of controversy. I really don't think it should. But if you have any comments or questions, drop those below. Thanks for watching.